So, a new crisis for the NHS as one of the main providers of the 111 non-emergency phone service in England says it wants to pull out of all of its contracts. NHS Direct says the contracts are financially unsustainable. The latest setback for the service comes as Channel 4's dispatches tonight make claims about worrying failings at another 111 provider. Jane Deeth has this report. Dispatches has been undercover inside 111. Do you think I should chat to finish and I'll just do it? Uh, we haven't got the conditions to spare. And worrying admissions from a 111 manager. Realistically, on the weekends, we still are unsafe. We don't have the staff to deal with the calls that are coming in. 111. Simple. But is it safe? Tonight, dispatchers will look at the service offered by one of the private providers, Harmony. Harmony says the ability to directly transfer a call is not what makes the service safe and denies patient safety has been compromised. It says dispatches ignored much evidence of good practice and took individual comments out of context and failed to differentiate between targets for customer service and fundamental attributes of safety. And today, another major provider of the urgent medical helpline, NHS Direct, announced it's pulling the plug as NHS England admits 111 has failed patients. 46 separate helplines were put out to tender. NHS Direct was one of the successful providers, but it turns out it can't do the job for the price it quoted. Or more accurately, it can't answer the calls quickly enough. Good evening, this is NHS 111 service. It's paid per call. It fears it would make a loss of £26 million. NHS Direct won contracts to run 11 of the 111 helplines, serving more than a third of England. But in June, it announced it was pulling out of Cornwall and North Essex before it even launched its services there. Now it says it wants out of its nine other contracts. Only a few weeks ago, the government was playing down the problems with 111. The concept of 111, I think, is a good one. You're absolutely right to say that we had some teething problems. It was only introduced in Easter. Now, who remembers what we're going to do next? For Thema Davis, they weren't teething problems. She rang 111 with stomach pain and vomiting blood. She couldn't speak to a doctor until she'd answered 50 questions. I was left for so long that I got so dehydrated, my kidneys almost failed. Critics say there are too few doctors and nurses for the people answering the phone to refer to. Most of the people that are manning the phone lines are untrained call handlers. It's not their fault. They're supposed to have two weeks training. That on its own we don't think is enough, but we also understand that many of them haven't even, even had the two weeks training. They're then supposed to have easy access to qualified nurses and they're finding they don't have that access. So you end up with a situation where people are mishandling the calls. We are looking at the quality of these services. That was one of the things uh, that, that I initiated from April, was a complete and comprehensive review of the quality to make sure that we have the right ratio uh, of call handlers to clinically trained staff. And if that needs to change, then we will change it. 111 was supposed to make things simpler and ease pressure on hospitals, but it's had the opposite effect. Because it's gone wrong so many times, people have just lost faith and stopped ringing. Instead, they're going straight to A&E. Now, new providers must be found to rescue the reputation of this service. Ambulance trusts, their experienced workforces already running 111 in some areas, might come to the rescue. But as for NHS Direct, the BMA says we got the service we paid for. I think that 111 needs to look at itself very carefully and decide how it can reform itself. That, of course, is going to cost money. And we as taxpayers ought to be asking how on earth a bidding war took place that actually resulted in a service delivering the lowest common denominator rather than a safe level of service. NHS England now has to find someone to run crucial medical helplines for millions of people. And it has 14 failing hospital trusts to improve. The system is under strain as winter approaches.